New this morning, UND police are looking for a burglary suspect. Here's the guy on your screen right now. Police say it's in connection to a burglary on campus, but they wouldn't say much other than that. If you have information on this person, call police 701-777-3491. New this morning, one person is behind bars for suspected drinking and driving in downtown Fargo. After this, take a look. Police say they were in the area of Broadway and Main Avenue when they saw this car hit a parked car, then leave the scene. Police say then the car hit a fence and, as you can see, a tree as well in front of the Island Park pool. 26-year-old Ariel McIntyre of Fargo was arrested for DUI and failing to remain at the scene of an accident. Minnesotans will be required to wear face masks inside stores and restaurants starting this weekend to help curb the spread of COVID-19. Governor Tim Walz signed the executive order yesterday, which takes effect this Saturday. The governor cited support from businesses and healthcare experts, along with a recent rise in the positive infection rate for the mandate. Anyone who violates that order can be punished by a fine of $100 and a petty misdemeanor. Businesses in violation could face a $1,000 fine or up to 90 days in jail. Minnesota health officials reported 507 additional cases of COVID-19. That brings the active case count to 4,175. Four new deaths were also reported, bringing the death toll to 1,552. 273 people are currently in the hospital. 119 of them are in the ICU. Over 42,000 people are listed as recovered. North Dakota health officials reported another 160 new cases of COVID-19. That's the highest new case count since the state started tracking the pandemic. However, Governor Doug Burgum says that number includes tests from Monday after a problem with the screening. Two more deaths were also reported, bringing the death toll to 96. There are currently 864 active cases. Over 4,400 people are listed as recovered. Despite recommendations from health officials, Governor Doug Burgum said in a news conference that North Dakota will not have a mask mandate. North Dakota is now just one of 19 states without a mask mandate. New research suggests wearing a mask doesn't just help the people around you, it protects you as well. The study, which comes from the University of California, San Francisco, will be published in a medical journal next week. It all has to do with blocking the amount of virus that can get into your body. Ian Cull spoke with the lead doctor. Until now, most research on the coronavirus has shown wearing a mask helps the people around you. But new findings from UCSF doctors reveal it helps the person wearing it too. So we're seeing these rates of not getting sick being driven up in places that mask and that's why it's important to message that masks help you, they help your family and that's why we all have to wear masks. Dr. Monica Gandhi is an infectious disease physician and led the team of doctors. They gathered data from multiple studies to come to this conclusion. If you are wearing a mask, you get in less of a viral dose, you're unlikely to get the infection but if you do get the infection, you're more likely to get asymptomatic infection, having no symptoms or not getting sick. They also studied multiple outbreaks at workplaces that were using face coverings. There was a outbreak in a uh, Oregon seafood processing plant. They had a COVID outbreak. Everyone had been wearing masks, 95% asymptomatic. This comes as President Trump acknowledged he thinks masks have a purpose. I have no problem with the masks. I view it this way. Anything that potentially can help, and that certainly can potentially help, is a good thing. The UCSF doctor's findings will be published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine next week. Population level masking is what's gotten many countries quickly through the pandemic. We are not getting through it quickly. We have to get through it quickly. Dr. Gandhi says because we're all being asked to wear masks, it's important that it's comfortable and that you can breathe through it. Even a thin cotton one serves as a barrier. Now 6.52 on this Thursday morning. Take a look at that nice bright sunshine out there this morning. And today's looking pretty nice, but of course it's the Red River Valley. You don't like the weather? Wait five minutes. And that's what we have coming up. Let's get a check of it with meteorologist Lisa Green. We do have some big changes coming up in the forecast. Wild weather ahead, and for that reason, we do have a first alert weather day declared for Friday and into Saturday as well. We've got heat, we've got storm potential, and some heavy rain to go along with those storms too. And so let's talk about this. Uh, we have two storm rounds possible Friday. First of all, overnight tonight, really early Friday morning, a round moves through. We heat things up and just scorch things during the day. And then later at night, another round possible. It's a kind of 
a conditional risk uh, for severe weather. That heat might be a very big limiting factor, so something to watch out for. But if it doesn't limit it, those storms could end up being pretty strong, especially on the evening side. Saturday, some of those storms sticking around uh, and producing a good amount of rain, too. And we're also looking at that intense heat and humidity. This is especially the case for tomorrow. For Friday, we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then in that excessive rainfall. And this is for that period of late tonight through Saturday, especially those areas that get hit multiple times. So here's a look at our heat headlines. We've got a excessive heat watch for Friday afternoon and evening. So this is for tomorrow. And heat index values could reach 105 degrees. That's getting tough and downright dangerous for those who aren't quite prepared for it. A heat advisory also in effect for our counties to the south. Looking at our heat index potential, again, highest on Friday, but also Saturday could end up being a pretty hot and muggy day as well. Perhaps not as intense as Friday, especially if we get more storms during Saturday. That'll keep those clouds around, prevent us from warming up as much. Visibility this morning, uh, starting off a little tough in Wadena and Carrington. We've got some patchy dense fog there. Everywhere else, we're looking pretty good. Clear skies right now. You can see that sun uh, here on our hourly planner for Fargo with mostly sunny skies for much of the day. As we head into the afternoon and tonight, we'll see those clouds build in in advance of our next chance for some storms. Temperatures today heating up. You're going to notice some differences. A little more wind out of the south or southeast gusting into the 20s to 30 miles per hour. A little more heat and with that comes a little more humidity. Of course, we'll definitely feel it as we head into your Friday uh, with that temperature reaching 90 degrees or more. So a couple of tough days ahead. Sunday, still a chance for some storms, but it does look like it's quieting down. A lot to watch out for. Thank you, Lisa. Parents, you probably don't want to hear this one. According to a new study, you may be spending more on school supplies this year than ever before. Many families have already started gearing up. The Valley Today's Kelly Hubbard talked with an NDSU professor on the record spending year and also has some budgeting tips. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Lisa and Jordan. Whether you plan on going to Target, Office Depot, or Walmart for your school supplies, or you want to do it online because of the COVID-19 pandemic, those receipts may start adding up quickly. The National Retail Federation, or NRF, says that parents with children in elementary school through high school plan on spending an average of $789.49 per family. That tops the previous record of $696.70 they said they'd spend last year. Spending is expected to total $33.9 billion, which is up from $26.2 billion last year, breaking the record of $30.3 billion set in 2012. Now get this. These are the top items consumers plan on buying because of e-learning. Number one is laptops, number two speakers and headphones, three electronic accessories, workbooks, then desks and chairs because many families don't want their children working on their beds during distance learning. So I talked with the ND, uh, associate NDSU professor and she says that it's important to sit down with the family and talk about a realistic budget as many low income families struggle with internet connection. So there's a lot of internet providers that provided that internet connection last semester, but will, be, will that be the case this year? I guess we'll have to see. Does that fall within this realistic budget? Do you have the money? Um, and also, you know, making that list of wants and needs and then going through every item and saying, do we really need this? Johnson says the best time to get those school supplies is right now. They're at their lowest. But of course, for more budgeting tips, you can head to our Valley News Live app for more. Great information. Thank you, Callie. Fargo Public School leaders have laid out five different plans for the upcoming school year correlating with the risk of COVID-19 in our area. This ranges from low risk where all students and staff return to school to high risk where everyone will use social or use distance learning. Superintendent Rupak Gandhi says on the current risk scale, the district would sit right in the middle at yellow. This would mean middle school and high school students would do the distance learning. Kindergarten through fifth grade would do a hybrid model, both in and out of the classroom. The superintendent adds these risk levels can vary by schools and they may not be district wide. We have a wide variety, wide variety of schools that are different sizes. So there might be a situation in which school A is in orange and school B is in green. But there are options for both families or teachers. Small groups of students would be allowed on campus from higher grade levels who need more assistance. Now also no student will be forced to go back to campus if they're not comfortable.
North Dakota residents in favor of legalizing recreational marijuana in the state will have to wait a little longer to see the issue put on an election ballot. The group had a year to gather and submit just under 27,000 valid signatures to the Secretary of State. The final deadline was Wednesday. Chairwoman Jody Vetter says the group gathered just shy of 24,000 signatures. Vetter says supporters are planning to start again with an identical proposal for 2022. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Here's today's question. In a new survey, 17% of people say they always bring this home from a vacation. We had a lot of good guesses this morning, but the answer is the soap and the shampoo from hotels comes in super handy if you're going camping or something later on. I definitely take them home and I definitely use them when I travel later. So. And for people who have campers, they're the greatest little things to just have in there. You use them when you need. Perfect. Perfect size. We here on the Valley today, we want to thank you for tuning in to watch our coverage and we want to reassure you that we are working hard to make sure you are staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic and you can find all of our news on the VNL News app at valleynewslive.com. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. Join us right now for more live up-to-the-minute news and weather on the Fargo CW.